Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's What's Happening at Trinity and Taking Our Faith Home. I'm Pastor Scott, one of the pastors here at Trinity Lutheran. As always, it's good to spend this time with you. Don't forget this Sunday, Mother's Day. We celebrate um, our mothers or, or maybe others who, who showed mothering love in our lives. And so we give thanks and ask for a blessing upon them. We also remember those who, who want to be mothers but can't be. I know this can also be a painful Sunday for some. Um, celebratory for many, but painful for others. So we remember them and we ask God's blessings upon them too, um, as, as they may be struggling with infertility or something along those lines. Just some things happening this week. On Tuesday is the next book club at 6.30 p.m. in Hambray Hall here at the church. Our Wednesday evening program continues for two more Wednesdays, this Wednesday and next. Meal at 5.30, followed by programming for all ages at about 6.15, 6.20. On Friday is the next Just Club, and I understand they'll be doing a special Mother's Day celebration, so please pay attention to that as well. And like I said, Happy Mother's Day to those for whom that applies this coming Sunday. I hope it is a wonderful and a blessed day, and we give thanks to God for all that you do for us. Um, as I do this, my mother, my 92-year-old mother, is in the hospital waiting to get a pacemaker, so my prayers go out um, to her. As far as I know, she's doing fine. She's just had some, some health issues that I guess are related to this pacemaker. So they're going to hopefully get that done here in the next day or two. And that'll um, spruce her back up and she'll be able to, to uh, go back to her normal life. Right now she lives at home by herself in our farmhouse. I don't know if that's going to continue or not. Probably some kind of rehab, maybe. Um, but uh, I give thanks for my mom and all of the things that she taught me. I have to be honest with you, and this is hopefully for many of you young mothers out there, I really didn't understand what my mother was trying to tell me till I was probably in my 30s and 40s. I think when I started having my own kids, I started to understand what and why my parents told me the things that they did. So mothers, don't ever give up. Don't get too frustrated or exasperated. You know, continue to instill those values and those foundations because they do pay off in the long run. And I give thanks that my mom taught me so many things that have helped me to be successful and have helped me have navigated and guided me through life. Um, so many people don't have that today. They don't get that. And I was fortunate too, so I give thanks for that. Our scripture reading for this week comes from the Gospel of John. This is part of Jesus's, again, farewell speech before he is about to leave them and, uh, and go into um, heaven. And so this is from John 17, verse 11, which reads, and now I, Jesus, am no longer in the world, but the disciples are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. One of Jesus' last wishes for his disciples and extended to us was that we would figure out how to be one in his name doesn't mean that we would all look alike, act alike, believe alike, think alike. That's not what he was saying. His disciples were a very diverse group. A lot of people don't know that. They were very diverse. They went from one end of the political spectrum to the other. They went from one end of the sociological spectrum to the other. They were a diverse group. Jesus picked a very diverse and difficult group of people. That's probably why he had so many problems with them. But he did an amazing thing. Despite all of that, he brought them together and sent them out and they changed the world. Now, how did, how did he do that? What does it mean to be one? I think there are two main things that, that I've always garnered from what Jesus did with these disciples that, that you know, made them go out as one despite their differences and change the world that we can learn from. Number one is their lives were based on Jesus' teachings. And the main teaching that Jesus taught them was love God and love your neighbor. Love God and love your neighbor. Jesus knew they weren't always going to like each other. Jesus knew they weren't always going to agree with each other. But they could still find ways to love each other and get along and find ways to work together. And when the people of God do that, <clears throat> despite how we might approach life differently or see life differently. And if we can still find ways, 
despite those things, to love one another, to respect one another, to listen to one another and hear one another <clears throat> and find ways to work together. That's, what I believe, what Jesus was talking about here in many ways, many ways of being one as they were one. In the wider context of this scripture verse that we have for today, Jesus talks a lot about how he taught his disciples and now he was leaving them and what he taught them, he knew could help them be successful in life. And he was praying to his father that, you know, these things that he had taught them would remain with them and help them to continue on even after he left them. And that's important for us. Part of our oneness is also being grounded in the scriptures. Part of us being one. It's not just individual effort. I can tell you the more you know scripture, the more you hear from Jesus, the more you understand what he was, what he was doing and changing in the world, the more you understand the, the great love and grace that he had in saving the world, the more you know that, the more willing you're going to be to be at one with others. Jesus prayed not only that they be one, but that they would remember and pay attention and follow through, follow in the teachings that he had taught them. So one of the ways we become one is by being grounded together in Scripture and understanding what God wanted for us. Secondly, and just as importantly, is Jesus gave them a common mission. When people have a common mission, something bigger than themselves, they tend to be more united. You know, I've watched this, you know, playing sports all my life. I've seen some of the most talented teams not do very well because they all were just out for themselves. All the players were just out for themselves. They didn't have that common mission of winning in championships. And I've seen some much lesser teams. I've been on some much lesser teams that won championships because we all were willing to sacrifice for the sake of the team and what was best for the team and what might help us win. It's no different here. It's no different here. Jesus was sending them out of the world. And he knew that if they would pay attention to and be willing to self-sacrifice for a bigger goal in life, something that would bring them life more so than they could ever find individually, that they would have a oneness in Christ and they would change the world. And that's exactly what they did. He took this diverse group of people and he turned them into people who were mission oriented and not individually oriented. And that's important for us still even today, because it's easy in the church to just sort of focus on our needs, our wants, our desires, what we think should happen, you know, which program, who should be this, that. I mean, it's easy to do that. We're, we're people. It happens, okay? Especially when you throw in strong beliefs like Christians. That happens. But if we can see and follow, again, Jesus' teaching of calling us for the sake of the world, something bigger than ourselves, that's what also will unite us as well. Like I said, my mom taught me a lot of things growing up. A lot of things have helped me. And when I think back, a lot of those things that she taught me were about being able to look beyond myself to others. I remember my mom telling me, you know, Scott, before you do something, think about it first. Think about how it might impact others. Think about how you would feel if someone did that to you. Sound familiar? That's what Jesus called, that's what we call the golden rule that Jesus gave us, you know. And she taught me a lot of things about, you know, thinking of others and paying attention to others and loving others. And that has helped me immensely in my life. It helps me to get beyond myself to something bigger than myself. And that is for the call to love and the call to mission in Christ. May we ever be people of love. May we ever be people of mission so that we might fulfill our Lord's call and our Lord's wish and prayer that we would be one. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, thank you for the love that you give us. And we also give you thanks for the call in your kingdom to mission and ministry beyond ourselves. As you prayed for those original disciples and pray for us, may we ever work to become one through the great love that we share in you and for the great opportunities you give us to share in mission. May our lives be guided by love and grace and sharing that love and grace with others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey folks, God bless you. Have a great week. Hope to see you soon.